Hello everyone and welcome back to another Whipsnade Zoo recreation video. It's been a little while again but um, we're back in and uh, you might notice something slightly different than normal kind of style. Um, we've got a bit of the map here. Um, so you guys might have seen before um, this method of doing like recreations of things um, with actual floor plans and stuff like that. Um, I know people used it a bit in Planet Coaster for recreating stuff um, and one of the things I have really struggled with quite a lot in terms of this recreation is actually laying everything out correctly um, making sure the sizes and things are accurate and angles and making everything line up properly um, as it should be. So I thought that maybe from now on, maybe not necessarily for the whole of the rest of what I've got to do, but um, at least for some aspects I'm going to try this method out um, and see how it works. So it's going to be a little tricky probably with some of the stuff I've already done um, and how it joins up because obviously I've tried to work things out as best I can but this is going to be the most accurate way of doing it. and there's going to be things that don't quite line up where I haven't done it as accurately as it should be and they won't necessarily line up but I can probably get away with certain certain bits not being exactly right which is fine um, I doubt I'll go back over everything else and redo it um, but there might be little bits I will tweak a little bit to make them work better for the new stuff um, with the, the proper accurate stuff so um, yes, today in this video, this is the bit I've chosen to do. So, as you all know, by now I'm sure I do make mods as well. Um, you can check out my stuff on the Nexus um, website um, where you can download mods. And one of the ones I've just done is the Red Crown Crane, or Japanese Crane, however you prefer to call it. Um, and uh, this is one of the enclosures, one of the species we have at Whipsnade. So I thought this is a nice small build. Um, I can showcase a mod animal because I, I did say originally I was going to start using modded animals in this uh, recreation as well to make it more accurate. Um, and I thought this would be a nice way to yeah, try this new method of the map um, making, um, enclosure making with this, this technique, showcase a mod and um, yeah try and try and expand a bit on what we've already done so this is the enclosure here normally I obviously show you the screenshots of the map but this is the area it will be so this is the uh, where the emus are not ostrich anymore this is emus here um, and then this is like the sewage work stuff um, all this kind of bit here and then this um, section here is for the cranes so that's the bit I'm going to focus on just getting this bit done um, and possibly just tweaking this paddock as well um, so things like that where I place the shed there actually if I'm if I'm lining everything up like this it should be there I've basically lined this up with where I predicted the road was supposed to go which did line up pretty well from some other working out and map stuff I tried to do before um, so I've, I've gone for this obviously it's going to have a knock on effect this should be the enclosure boundary here um, whereas I've got it up here um, which would just means that that gap will be a little bit bigger if I rejig this um, a bit or I'll leave that and just change that I'm not 100% sure exactly how I'm going to work it out but yeah this uh, should come down here so basically what I'm going to do is I've placed, placed bits around got the uh, just laid out the uh, enclosure boundary like this um, so yes yeah, it's, it's not a complicated build there's not a huge amount to actually do um, for this one there's just a shed at the back and then uh, a pond little pondy bit here um, there's one little feeding shed over here um, here somewhere there and uh, just some planting and stuff um, so yeah that is what I'm gonna try and get done today with the new method um, I'll still pop a couple of pictures or screenshots if I can find any or take any um, and uh, yeah I will show you what it looks like when it's finished.
Hello everyone and welcome back to the live portion of this video. Now uh, you will notice that some things have changed and today is actually the release of the Wetlands Animal Pack. Um, and as of course you know this build was for the Red Crown Crane which I originally said in my pre-recorded part um, that I did before I started the build that I would be using my mod for. Um, which I made a little while ago, but obviously since then we have now, just today, got the actual official Red Crown Crane, so this is not going to be a mod showcase um, today, uh, instead it will be a Wetlands Animal Pack showcase for the Red Crown Crane um, in this build in Whipsnade, so um, uh, yeah, you saw the layout and everything that I used, the original map um, billboard thing that I did and this is the finished result so we've got the path coming down here um, uh, sorry the road and then we've got this little path here it's textures and things of roads and things like that might change because um, this is a little bit too bright orange for my liking um, but this is what we've got so um, I haven't actually gone through and done much of the other stuff that I said I might do um, instead I've just focused on this for now so if we come down to the level, this is what we get. So what we'll do is we'll look through the fence, because you'd kind of want to look through the fence anyway. So we've got the little shed there. Um, we've got the actual cranes, beautiful. Um, we've got our small shelter at the back, and I did make the larger shed that's behind it um, for the drive through um, part. Um, just to kind of fill out and, and be more of a backdrop for the actual enclosure itself instead of a big gap there. Um, so yeah, we've got the actual um, the crane's little shelter there. We've got the tap. I might make a custom version of this, but for once, this tap actually is kind of what we've got. We've got a small dish um, and then an actual tap, um, pole tap thing leading into this um, pond. So I thought, why not actually use that for a change? Um, planting wise, um, originally what I had done is just the standard grass texture all the way around, um, but I did decide to change it up. It just looked too flat, too boring, um, not as realistic as it should be, so I've changed it up for a custom kind of floor grass scrubby texture. So we've got the dream grass, the crowberry. Um, that's pretty much it to be honest, the whole, the whole of the floor, but it just looks so much more lifelike I think, um, more realistic, um, more interesting, pleasing to the eye than the in-game grass textures. Um, and then we've got um, a few, quite a few big trees around, these are actually new trees. Um, originally I had the rainbow eucalyptus in here for quite a lot of these because um, it was the right kind of tree shape and size and stuff like that. but. Um, annoyingly, obviously, the bark texture was not right. Um, I was intending to mod it. I did make a modified version that changed it to be all brown colours rather than rainbow colours. Um, but then just today, obviously, with the, the pack and the update, this is from the update, um, I got these trees, um, tested them out, and they actually worked perfectly for what I wanted them for here. So these are the, let me see, water tupelo. I don't know how you pronounce it, um, but that's what we've got in there, a few of them. So, um, we've also got um, a couple of stringy woods because they're nice shapes, um, trees, um, some of the cork, oak, I think it was, the here, some slightly smaller trees there, a couple of log piles um, and branches dotted about. And then if we look towards the back, we've just got a little shrubby thing there and then um, the the one thing we kind of lack a little bit is hedgerow conifer type trees. Um, we've got obviously the tall evergreen trees, the classic sort of triangular shaped ones, but we don't really have any sort of bushier, more rounded um, versions, Leylandia kind of trees, um, hedgerow bush things. So I've used here monkey puzzles. Um, some can write down into the ground, and I think they work pretty well for what I uh, what I actually wanted to achieve there, either side of the uh, the shelter. Um, and yeah, to be honest, that's kind of it, really. 
Um, we've got the the cranes in here, as I say, really nicely done, um, better than I was hoping, because I thought they might be a little bit too flamingo-like, but they've they have edited it a bit. Um, so yeah, they look really nice, and obviously it's nice to just have additional um, whipsnade animals added into uh, into the game as um, as we go along, so we don't have to use various different species as replacements. So yeah, from the outside, you get a, a kind of view of what what this enclosure is looking like at the minute. Obviously, surrounding areas aren't done at all. We've still got the original terrain level there, which obviously is incorrect. Um, so on that side is the sloth bear enclosure, and then here will be the yak. Um, and then on that side, as I've said before, is the sewage um, area there, so that will need to be done as well. Um, so yeah, that is that is our, uh, our cra red crowned crane enclosure for Whipsnade. Now the other thing I'm going to try and do, and um, I'm not sure if it's going to work, um, but what I'm going to try and do, and I will cut to it if it does work, um, is try and get the short clawed otters in, the Asian short clawed otters. So, um, as you will know if you've been watching this series so far, let's come down here. This is our Asian short clawed otter enclosure, which I did quite a long time ago now. Um, and it's um, yeah originally just an implied enclosure but now we actually have the species which is nice so what I'm going to try and do is um, put the new animals in there but the thing that I'm not 100% sure about is whether they will actually work properly in there so um, we'll buy them where have they gone? down here now I've had to do a little bit of trickery here so because this is all water um, it's it's all a strange layout to actually make it um, have a proper fence around it and the path and everything around it um, I can't actually make this properly into a habitat itself so what I've done is I've tagged it onto this enclosure here and we'll try and pop them in there and they just move them when they arrive so we'll come over here I can find the entrance and then we will see if we can get the otters in here and um, and then I'll ho I'm hoping that they'll actually be able to use the um, the island itself obviously there's quite a lot of like stuff on it but I'm hoping the hitboxes will be quite small and we will be able to plonk them down there so there we go, we've got one in. We should have the other one arrive in a second. Okay, so they're very cute. Um, let's grab them. And this is basically the technique we used for the um, capuchins over there um, because we um, had to have them. Um, same, similar sort of situation with the moat, the entrance over here, um, and then just click and actually move them. So let's click there, and we'll click here. I was unprepared, I started recording and forgot that I was actually going to do this before I started. So you're doing it along with me. And then plonk that one there. There we go. Oh, I did not want that. Excellent. Ah, perfect. Now let's have a look up there. Um, I actually do want the heat map. Traversable area. Okay, this is good. So they can get down, they can get into the water, they can get up, back up onto the island itself. So that actually works as a habitat, which is really good. Um, it just means that any time they're taken away for whatever reason, there we go. <laughs> any time they're taken away for any reason, so vet stuff or anything like that, um, they will reappear over there. So it's just something to, to be aware of, but 
It's something you can do in your zoos if you need to do stuff like this where it's just, you know it's not going to work out. So I've literally just got a whole thing around here and then these two, I've deselected them on the tab as a habitat barrier. We've got no fence there and then these this portion is deselected as habitat barrier so it's taking the habitat to be all of that all the way around. So excellent, we've actually got our Asian shortboard otters in there as well. So two species um, that have been added in this pack. Um, we have now got um, in the actual zoo itself which is really nice. So uh, that is that is it for this episode really. Um, not the not the most um, difficult habitat to make um, but nice to try out this new technique of um, of actually getting the uh, the map itself into the game and uh, using it to help me with the layouts there we've oh, got a sneak peek of the uh, sea lines um, use, yeah, using it to get uh, slightly more accurate um, layouts and things like that and scale and stuff um, because that's definitely something that's very difficult so yeah, and nice to be able to showcase two of the new species as well. So, um, as I've said every single time, I'm not 100% sure what I'll do in here next. Um, I still do intend to use some mods. Um, obviously, this was going to be my first mod that I used um, in the Whipsnade Zoo recreation, but that's not the case anymore because we have it officially. So, um, yeah, I'll... Uh, I'll have to have a look and see what takes my fancy next, um, but I would imagine it'll probably be something around here again, continuing um, on uh, maybe down this way um, with the sloth bears or the shivasi's horses, something like that. Um, so yes, thank you very much for watching, I hope you enjoyed having a little look at uh, another enclosure in Whipsnade after quite a long time and seeing the new, uh, the new animals as well. And I will leave you with some cinematic shots as always. And thank you for watching. Leave comments um, if you have any thoughts. Uh, leave a like if you enjoyed. And subscribe if you want to keep up to date with this and my other stuff. Um, and yeah, I hope to see you in the next one.